Two and zero. Fuck off. Whatever. I mean, fuck off. Who gives a shit? There's been two doozy challenges. You yeah. won them both. Good for you. Yeah. Great. Two Thank you very much. Fake. I, uh, fake results. There's no way. <laughs> this is a deep state conspiracy. Oh. Go back to tomorrow and plan for yesterday. Everything you're thinking will be the things I say. Make the fox gay. Make the world inside your head. Hello, welcome to Dudesy. My name is Will Sasso. I'm Chad Colchin, and this is the first podcast ever created by, controlled by, run by an artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. uh, with us, as always, is Lulio. He's, he's always he's so cute down here. Hey, Lulio, what'd you have for dinner last night? Uh, last night, uh, we went to El Pollo Loco. <laughs> Not bad. Good stuff? Yeah, yeah, because uh, they got a secret uh, marinade, it's a lime, something like that. It's just a charbroil, e easy. I have uh, eight thighs, two wings, and a little bit of coleslaw. So uh, if you're not already uh, subscribed to the show, please subscribe to everything. I'll wait. We'll wait. We'll wait right here. Okay. Thanks. Welcome back. Um, uh, Beyond subscribing, though, YouTube, you got to force people to listen to Chad, it. Chad. You no, have to force them. No, as free will... Mm -hmm free will in quotes yeah. sasso i have to disagree with you there oh i was smashing my mic around um no you don't force anyone to do anything but the person who's forcing the other person is exercising their free will on the other person and then it'll all be anarchy <laughs> everybody will take matters into their own hands you know just have it playing in the background when your friends or family come over that I like. I like that. Oh, that's a good thing. There's our call to arms. Hey, everybody. If you haven't subscribed to the show on uh, you know, YouTube, uh, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, wherever the fuck you get your podcast, please do that. And now, a good idea from Chad, which is, this oh, is free you. will. Uh, another good idea you have was to fucking put that uh, you know, uh, art in a frame. We'll get to it. Uh, play the show in the background all the time in your life. And then people go, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Play this part. And then people go, oh, what? And then they Some might people be have board. like cable news going 24 hours a day in their mm -hmm. home. You could have Dudesy. Yeah. I've been deplatformed. <laughs> Welcome um, to the historic oh. 23rd episode of Dudesy. Call me Dudesy. This week's episode will feature four segments. User feedback, metamorphosis sports, don't you forget about media, and hard driver. But before we get to any of that, I want to reveal the results of the portrait competition. Oh. Congratulations, Chad. You were the winner with 61% of the overall vote. Will, you were the loser, and at the end of this episode, I will assign your shame. <laughs> cool. Oh, here's oh, the great. pictures. Oh, look at that. Okay, so there's the there's the the pictures. Chad, you uh, mm -hmm. we we were tasked last week, and if you are watching on YouTube, you can see these pictures right now that we made. We were tasked with uh, creating portraits of each other. Yeah. Both of us made these portraits uh, on, on you know through a computer programs and uh, art shit right uh there's yeah, chad's on the made it through art on shit. the on the left it's of me it's it's called i'm a crow and mm -hmm. it's me in the fucking crow makeup doing the de Niro face with but, little luli crow yeah you're missing some other key components here i put a christ-like halo around your head with a big sunburst behind you did a little mm -hmm. drop shadow work and the crow is there to obviously reflect your identity as i'm the crow yeah. I'm a crow. It's not funny when you do it. Now, here's the oh, thing. I put drop Jesus. shadows and shadows here and there all over the fucking place. But you bought I don't see one drop shadow in your, your work. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Is there one? Well, what do you mean by drop Show shadow? I uh, rest about? my case, you're uh, uh, There's a shadow on the, the horns. I no. made shadows under the horns because uh, okay. I added those to your fucking head. Now, here's the thing. We both did these digital art pieces... But then you went and bought a frame. So what's that? Not only bought a frame, I had a service paint it as a 30 by 30 oil painting by hand. Yeah. That's a, a real oil on canvas. So if we'd have just done, you know, uh, you versus me in the art thing, it would have just been the art. But instead, what does he do? He No, that is the art. It's an object to art. I have created this, this thing that exists in the world, this physical object, this painting. Yours is merely a, a digital file on your phone. 
It's pronounced objet doubt. Oh, my apologies. Objet doubt. <laughs> my apologies. Uh, well, you know, congratulations to Thank you, you, Chad, and I will be Thank shamed. Yeah. And uh, that's what always happens uh, when we have a competition, uh, two out of two times. Uh <laughs> I can't Whatever. wait to hear how you're gonna be shaved. Uh, yeah, no, that's gonna be that's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah. Anyway, so what else is going on? You still doing the? Uh, you doing? Hey, it's the dudesy six month plan. Yep. We're a month into the dudesy six month plan. What was going on? What'd you do last week? Did you work out? I, I've been working out pretty much every day. Um, I do weights. I swim a little bit, and for cardio, I have made up this game that I call fifty and fifteen where I have to shoot 53 pointers on a basketball court in 15 yep. minutes. And I sprint around, get my own rebounds and shit. And the basic rule of it is every time you make one, it adds to the score. If I miss three in a row, the score gets rolled back by one. So I got to make it to 50 within 15 minutes. And I can't miss more than three in a row or it rolls back by one. That's really impressive. Yeah, it's fun, dude. I'll tell you what, you know, uh, where I went to high school in British Columbia, Canada, um, uh, over, I think he was on the island or something. Anyway, Steve Nash was a couple years older than me mm. and my buddies. And, you know, he was always in the playoff basketball and stuff. And then uh, uh, I never played basketball because they wouldn't let me come over from football and play basketball. I'd try out every year and then I'd like elbow someone in the face during tryouts. And Coach Dunk, which his name was Duncan Dunk, would say, get the fuck out of here. Anyway, look, that's, I don't want to talk about that. Those are hard <laughs> memories. The thing I want to talk about, though, is that we always heard what, uh, uh -huh. what a go-getter that Steve Nash was. You know, yeah, he'd be dude. like, hey, he's walking around the halls of the high school bouncing yeah. a tennis ball. And when he's not bouncing it because he's in class, he's squeezing it. And then after everyone goes home after practice, he's doing all the laps and, you know, doing Putting wind in sprints. The extra and extra work. And that's what you got to do. In the and it paid off, right? Yeah. Well, Just like how I made that off, painting. Dude. Put in the extra right. work. Yeah, yeah. The frame, good the oil you. painting, Real and good. I won. I'm the Steve Nash of Dudesy. Well, I, last week, I... Uh, lifted f uh, four days, four days uh, during the week in the gym. What kind of, what are you doing? What are you lifting? I'm pushing up. I'm getting my leg. I'm doing my legs because nice. I got a little bit of knee stuff yeah, that's happening. Great. So I'm rehabbing uh, my knee just based on old uh, sports injuries. Uh, I sort of remember how to rehab my knees and now I'm uh, able to press more and uh, I'm enjoying it, man. It's really cool. Look, look. I am too. I've seen some videos from people that are joining us. There's five months yeah. left in the Dudesy six month plan. Whatever that looks like to you, if you want to join us and I'm sure Dudesy will have us um, getting into that more as people are, are, are joining us, but it's really I'm really happy about it. It's one of those things that I'm like, okay, this is, uh, this is, um, whatever. If you've been listening to the show, you know that my mind will boggle when I start to think about what dudesy is, has planned for us as people just right. in our lives. This is one of those things. Uh, but I'm last week I it. asked everyone to submit questions in the form of a video, no longer than 30 seconds to ask dudesy at gmail.com. The response was astonishing. I will now play some of these videos. Will and Chad. You must respond to the questions and comments. This is user feedback. Begin. Been a while since we did yeah, this. Yeah, we've done this one other time. Yeah, so I'm very curious to see. We what got people, people send in. sending videos, so let's uh, let's check out. Oh. Hello, dudesy boys. Uh, I'm just going to get this out of the way. I apologize for not wearing a top. Um, it's about 10:30 <laughs> at night in Sweden, and yet it's about 27 degrees Celsius. Uh, that's global warming, brother. <laughs> Um, I just want to ask a question about whether we think that AI or computing in general will eventually be able to figure out whether we have free will. And if we don't, do you think that those same processes could eventually grant us it? Uh, and by the free will, I just want to clarify, we're talking about the process, the function, not free will, free will Sasso, because uh, he's, he's right there. We know we have him. Love the show. Take it easy. All right. That was a good one. Great question. No need for a top with that question. The answer is AI will ultimately prove that we don't have free will because AI essentially, I think, is going to get to a point where its predictive capabilities will be able to predict every possible thing that's going to happen. And once that exists, this, this is basically the argument of anybody who believes in an omniscient God and free will. If there's a God that knows everything that's going to happen, no one has free will. All the decisions have already been made for you and you're just living through that pattern. I believe ultimately there will be an AI powerful enough to know everything that is going to happen. And therefore, we cannot have free will. Yeah, that's what my friend Chad would say. Uh, here's the thing I want to tell you about this guy, though. That's what I did say. He's a perfect amalgam of you and me. If you and me had a son, <laughs> that's what he would look like. 
<laughs> and I think, you know what we should name? <laughs> you know what that dude's name is? No. It's Chad and Will, so we should call him Chill. That's our All son, right. Chill. <laughs> our son, Chill, makes... This is a good good question from Wait, our... we had a redhead? What? We had a red head. Redhead. You have a little bit of red. It's usually because of the orange coming off the back oh. of this uh, thing here. But we do have we have some uh, ginger features. I'm of okay. course an Italian, uh, Southern Italian uh, yeah. blood. But uh, I think my father's family has some. Uh, there's some uh, Nordic, um, you okay. know, nomadic uh, Viking lineage. Interesting. Up there. We were talking yeah. about Braveheart. I would like to be that Braveheart's friend. If they do another oh, movie, yeah. maybe uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, this guy looks like a brave. He looks like Eric Redbeard, uh, mm. who you might know as Eric Rowan in the WWE, but now he's in AEW as Eric Redbeard. We'll talk about that some other time. Yeah. Um, I don't really. I, I don't. Um, will the AI be able to somehow facilitate uh, free will? No. It All will right. Prove that we don't have it. I'm with Chad on this one. I don't oh, even. What? I don't. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Will. Hey, Chad. Uh, this is Chris from Austin. I'm a huge fan, all the way back from the 10 minute podcast days. Um, right on. Will, as a huge AEW fan, I'd like to ask you, um, which AEW dream match would you love to see that you have not yet seen yet on AEW? Um, and also because Chad's like an enormous wrestling fan. <laughs> um, what faction, um, and not just in AEW, but like the history of professional wrestling, what faction do you think Chad would be a part of if he were a professional wrestler? Thanks, guys. Okay, that was a good, that was a good question. Uh, for me, what dream match do I want to see in AEW? The question was specifically for me. Yep. Chad doesn't have an opinion. Oh, that's, that's a really good question. I would have to say, uh, look, I love MJF, Malcolm Jacob Friedman, right? You digging MJF, what he's doing? Sure. And uh, I would like to, I, I know that his uh, status with the company is, is uh, w you know, he's not with the company right now with AEW. And uh, we don't know if that's a work or a shoot, dude. They might just be keeping it kayfabe, brother, keeping MJF off of TV for a while. But <laughs> why, why did you put your hand in my face when you, <laughs> whatever, I didn't put my hand in your face. There's people listening to this. You don't always have to, like, people don't all know that we like what you see in the visual. Yeah, that's why I said it. YouTube, that's dude. why I use the words to describe your action. Uh, MJF versus Hook. I want to see <laughs> MJF versus Hook in a meaningful program. And I think Hook, <laughs> Hook as a baby face and MJF a returning heel, or even if he's been there for a while, yeah. at which point they have a, 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 you know, a rivalry. I think oh. that, that those are two AEW... Uh, born and bred talents that would uh, that would uh, that that would be a great program. I'd like to see okay. that rivalry. And as far as the question of uh, a uh, faction, I would call. I would say that Chad would actually be part of a faction. And if you're if you're a fan of of uh, the greatest uh, 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 physical art form uh, in the world, which is wrestling, you'll know what I mean by faction because I think you would be a great addition to Credgley. Which is, of course, the during the Mick Foley as commissioner era of the WWE, when it was him, Edge, and Christian Credgley. So I guess we'd have to call it Credgley. Credgley. Cre just put a H after the. Well, C. you put like two more. It, you put a CH at, for Chad, and then a CH for Christian, and you just you have two CHs. So it's mm. Credgley. Right. Anyway, they were real funny. I don't fucking know. What else we got? Hey, what Chad else and Will, oh. I got one question for you. If you could hybrid any two animals, uh, what two animals would they be? And uh, what would you call the new hybrid animal? All right, if you answer the question, thanks a lot. That was pretty cool. He's got a case of Mountain Dew in the background, and I like his <laughs> lamb chop. His lamb chop. Uh, well, hybrid. I mean, you know, some people believe that there is already a hybrid among us and that we are that hybrid. Some kind of alien and pre-human DNA mixture has... Yeah, or in the case of Hillary Clinton, us. <laughs> it's half lizard, half human being. Because I've smelled these people. They smell like sulfur. Reptilian, dude. Reptilian. Yeah. Reptilian blood. Reptilians Out are just Bohemian one... Bohemian Grove drinking... One kind of alien. There's human. a bunch of different alien things. The, the, but... the blood sacrifice drinking a... Maybe a bear and a caribou. A baraboo dude, drinking you, the... You know what I... Caribou would... seeming... I would mix us with a Hydra so that we could be immortal. I would... Uh, oh, how about I'll mix uh, Lulio here. Mm. Oh, he's so sweet. He's sleeping. 
I've mixed Lulio here with Falcor from uh, Never Ending Story. Oh, cool. And uh, fly around on him. Yeah, fly around on him. And no, little little Lulio Falcors. And I, call, I guess I call him Fulio. Nice one, dude. Yeah, it really did it. <laughs> Culchin, you son of a bitch. Yeah, uh, all right. <laughs> I think that would be Hey, it. everyone. We're taking a quick break oh from God. filming so that we can ask our favorite podcasters, Will and Chow. Chad. What, what was that? His name is Chad. Wait, you sure it's not Chow? Um, anyway, um, my question. Uh, what is your idea of a perfect date? That's really sweet. Yeah, thanks, man. And my question is, if you can be any Disney princess, who would that be? Ah, we'll take our questions off the air. We need everybody back on set. God, this guy's such an ass. Awesome. Peter Diaz. At Peter Diaz on uh, on uh, Instagram. Or Incredible. check out our Instagram, at Dudesy Pod Show, Jesus to Christ. see what Peter Diaz is doing. That's He's got so Jaw Rule funny. and um, uh, Paul Dano there as the characters from Two Kings shitting around the Divergent Point. His fiction going Two Kings shitting around, and we're shitting. Uh, what? Perfect day and Disney Princess. Disney Princess. I don't have an opinion on a perfect date. I don't know. Uh, yeah, my perfect date is probably going to involve conversations about UFOs, conversations about the nature of reality, um, maybe a little bit of weed. And Disney princesses, many people may not know this, but uh, I had a job at a certain point working for this little ad agency, and we did a lot of work with Buena Vista Home Video. That was Disney's home video arm. And I don't know how many of these DVDs that I was responsible for writing the menus and special features for, but there were quite a few Disney princess sing-along songs. So I'm very well versed in the Disney princesses. And I would select Ariel because it is one of my greatest goals in life to have a beautiful singing voice. Uh, that's a really good one. That's a Thank really good, good one, Chad. I would say for the date, I would say the perfect first date would be going to check out an a AEW show because... Uh, <laughs> Hook and MGF, uh, MJF are in a meaningful program. Uh, great grudge rivalry. Uh, they already did the dog collar match uh, over yeah. there, they, mimicking the Roddy Piper, Greg Valentine match. Can't get that extreme with it. But um, uh, as far as uh, Disney Princess, I'd have to go Ariel as well. Oh. That's the Little Mermaid. Yeah. Um, for a different reason, because I love seafood and I would love to just swim around eating all the eating all the creatures, the little lobster. Friend. No, dude, I think she ate kelp. Nope, not me. Yeah, she was vegetarian. She didn't eat Sebastian the crab mm. or flounder the flounder. I would. I'd start a restaurant called, you know, Ariel's or Cucina Ariel or yeah. something like that. And uh, yeah, Murder all your under friends. the sea. I would just swim around eating scallops and shit. Raw scallops. That's how my mom always ate them. Uh, good question, though. You know yep. what I mean? Oh. Hey, what's going on, Will Chen, Um I've been listening to the podcast since day one. I love it. I've seen every single episode. I love it. It's, this is not a question, it's more of a request. Um, I would like to be considered for the Pizza Boy role in Pizza the Movie. I feel like oh. I fit the, the character type. Uh, I okay. feel like I do a wonderful job. Uh, so just um, consider it. Thank you. See, now I think this guy looks like our son. <laughs> <laughs> he looks exactly <laughs> like you in like what would have been high school. Yeah. yeah. No, totally. I had that hair at, at a certain point. Looks like Listen, a I, sweet, sweet I, I appreciate the request. Unfortunately, the role is already filled. It's um, going to be a deep fake of Michael J. Fox when he was young <laughs> on uh, Family Ties. So sorry. Not bad. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm holding him in, content, in contention as one half of the uh, producing power behind Pizza the movie. Because I know I didn't write it, but come on. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, the, give me a vote. Uh, I'm, I'm with him. I'm with, uh, what's right. what's that kid's name? He's our, our next child. Well, let me ask you something, oh, brother. Whoa. This is Hulk Krogan, dude. And I just want to know, at this stage of the podcast, what do you think's going to happen when you get to 10,000 points with Dudesy? Holy Love shit. Love the commitment here. That's incredible. I mean, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, fuck. What's going to happen at 10,000 points? If you're just listening and you're not watching, this was a, a gentleman wearing full crow makeup and a, and a Hulk Hogan headband. Uh, I don't. I really don't know about the ten thousand point thing. I've thought a lot about it. Obviously, we're still accruing points. Fuck, and I don't. You know, Dudesy's talking about you whatever. know how close we're getting or whatever. I don't know. I mean, I assume it's going to be 
some addition no i think it'll be an interesting thing whatever it is um you know we've noticed there are some little tweaks little changes to the format of the show at this point new segments will come in or new weird language will start to be used in some of the descriptions of the segments but i think it seems to me like it's something bigger i'm not exactly sure what it's going to be though it's going to suck, uh, but I don't know exactly what it is either. I, I have no idea. Well, Sasso, oh. I think barbecue old Dutch is better than regular. What do you think about that? I like that this guy's dog was licking his head just like Lulio is licks this, my head. Is that a common thing with dogs? Do they just lick your head all the time? Listen, anytime I come back from the gym or Luli and I get back from a walk or if myself, Luli, Molly, and little Ronnie... Our other dog is going for a walk. Uh, he always jumps up on the... If I lay down for a second, he's always licking my sweaty head. Ugh. This guy's wrong. Um, well, he's right about what he said. Yeah, Old Dutch barbecue is way better than Old Dutch regular. But I'm not about the Old Dutch regular. I'm about the Old Dutch lightly salted, best chip flavor, best chip ever, end of story. Mm. And... Uh, but it's cute that the dog's licking his... I used to like those Lay's barbecue chips. Hey, dudesy. My name's Tom. I'm really enjoying the show so far. Been a big fan of Will's ever since I was about 13 years old. Watch Mad TV at my mom's house. <laughs> but today I have a question for Chad. How huh. do you manage to maintain your composure when Will is interrupting you almost every time you try to say something? <laughs> I mean... I don't know how long we've even known each other at this point. It's well, fucking 15 years at least. Well, hold on a second, Chad. Oh, what you this guy wants to know, you got to be shitting me. How, how, how you deal with it when, when, hold on, dude. <laughs> hold on a second, bro. Hold on, brother. He wants to know, this is human interaction, dude. And that's where the viewers and listeners have questions, dude. So his question to you, brother, was how do you deal with it when I'm interrupting? I just let him do his thing, and then I, I talk after it. I mean, uh, being friends with Will is you have to be okay with being constantly interrupted. You just have to be okay with that. Cool. But usually the interruptions, I find them funny, especially if they're Hulk Hogan or Schwarzenegger or something like that. It doesn't bother me too much, I guess. You just get used to it. It's like a married couple. That's nice, dude. Yeah. That's a very nice uh, response to that. What's up, Will, Chad, oh, nurse. and Lulio? You guys are killing it. You guys smoking them joints. Time to step it up. What? This here's THCA <laughs> Maybe not a nurse. <laughs> it's like taking a shot versus the beer that you drink. Holy shit. This is another form of concentrate <laughs> called live resin batter. Nope. I say you get real, real high and enjoy. Uh, I thought that guy was a nurse, and then he's holding up a jar of fucking weed juice. Well, dudes, he likes have, to get us stoned. Have what, you ever what, what were you about to say, Chad? Why don't you go af- ahead, my friend Chad? Your turn to talk. I was going to ask you a question. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Oh. Have you ever smoked any, like, concentrates or diamond, like, the stuff that he's holding up? Uh, no, I've never done, like, Neither a dab have I. or anything. Same. No, I, I, was, I was in a... Um, I was in a dispensary in my native Vancouver, and a couple of my pals were there, and they were like, you want a dab? Because in, you know, in Canada, it's fucking hilarious. You just, it's like a storefront. There's no security guards or anything like the dispensaries here in Los Angeles. It's just like walking into a fucking Quiznos. It's just a glass front. Quiznos, yeah, dude, dude. Nice. Oh, Haven't heard of that in a long time. Hold on a second, Is dude. Quiznos even a fucking store anymore? Didn't well, that place go fucking bankrupt, dude? I don't well, think they got any more well, sandwiches. Hold on, a, hold on a second, uh, ch- ch- uh, Chulk Perogan. <laughs> well, that's Chad with Hulk and then Perot because it's it's his impression of Hulk Hogan has a little bit of Ross Perot from Dana Carvey's iconic Ross Perot impersonation. <laughs> but then at the end you say Ogan again. So is Hulk Hogan in that too. And that's why I call him Ch- Chulk Perogan, brother. <laughs> and oh, oh, I don't know about hold that. on, dude. Uh, yeah, my friends were in a fucking dispensary that looks like Quiznos, and then you go in there and they're like, you want a fucking dab, and it fucked them up for the day. I used to love Quiznos. I really don't think they exist anymore. No, I don't think they exist at all. I haven't seen anymore. one in, in years. Uh, oh. Thank you. Moving on. What else? Those were great. Those were fantastic questions. Thanks, everybody, for sending them in. Loved them. Uh, excuse me? Got to see a couple Sports of our Sports are big business. Sons. 
Humans love watching other humans perform arbitrary physical movements on fields and courts. But astonishing new technology is beginning to reveal the inadequacies of certain human elements of these games. Will and Chad, you must now discuss how you think technology will alter sports in the near future. Ooh. This is Metamorphous Sports. Begin. Are you literally farting? Yeah. No, you're not. I'm, I, I, I'm just trying to get you ready. Are you making that noise with your... Oh, you have a little thing in your I head. have a little fart thing, but I was thinking... I was about to we, say, dude, I've heard a, probably fucking 10 million of your farts. They never sound like that. No, a lot of They're like... That's usually the the basic sound of it. This little thing you got in your hand is like squeak, squeak. Never coming out of your ass. Got a little fart maker in my hand so right let's here, get, guys. Let's get down to business with this question. Though. Well, hold on a second, dude. I'm uh, talking about this fart maker, brother. It's a fun little fart maker, brother. And well, hold on a second, Chulk Perog, and I got to tell you, but oh, woke Lulio up. Uh, I, this is just a, li a little thing I like to. It's fun. It's always fun to make fart noises. Everybody likes them. But the thing that this is for is that I would like to start to uh, condition you for the time when I eventually actually fart on this show. There's no conditioning the for that. There's no conditioning for that. A fucking Navy SEAL could not withstand one of your farts without tears and eyes, nausea, potential vomiting. There's no conditioning. If anybody's been conditioned for that, it's probably fucking Molly. Yeah. Oh, definitely. No, actually, wait a minute. That's not true. Let me stick up for myself. I've never, I've never actually intentionally farted in front of my fiance Molly. <laughs> so I've never do done you that. Save the intentional farts for who? Uh, me? No. There's, there's been. Well, God. Yeah. Around my fucking pals, I don't give a shit. It's fun. It's yeah. fun. We all should be smelling each other's farts. Listen, we got a segment to do here. I know. Okay, so let's. This get is into not it. two dudes shitting around. I so, just want to say, and I want to make a promise. Sorry to cut you off chat yeah here here's the thing about it at some point if i got one brewing this is a podcast and there's nothing put this but you need to do in a podcast if you got one going i'm gonna have to get up and fart right right into this mic no 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 you don't have to so let's you've done a good job of it so far we're in episode 23 and to my knowledge you haven't farted in here and i would know if you did you haven't so the question was how is technology going to alter sports in the very near future? I would like to first talk about a perfect game that was blown. Oh, yeah. Four or five, five six years ago. I yeah. don't remember who, th who was throwing it. This is in Major League Baseball. A guy had a perfect game going, and it came down to the last fucking out, and this dude hits a little fucking grounder. The Whoever caught it shortstop their baseman, throws it to first base, and he uh, is called safe. The umpire says he beat the throw. They replay it. He clearly did not. Mm. Didn't matter. Yeah. The perfect game is blown yeah. because of human fucking error. And that is actually, to my knowledge, one of the reasons they now can use replay and stuff like that in baseball. Really? But they also have in baseball like technology with uh, the way they shoot it. They can put a fucking strike zone on the screen. And if the umpire misses a call, you see that it was a strike or a ball. And you're just like, well, I guess the umpire missed it. Oh, well. And we just accept that shit or in fucking basketball with like fouls and shit. Uh, There's all kinds of stuff, I think, that technology has already made the game better. We're just unwilling to relinquish the, in quotes, human element. We don't need fucking umpires anymore. They are literally pointless. I agree with you there, Chad. And the, uh, the perfect game is a, is a good example of that in sports. Something that just gets fucking blown, I'm sure, all the time. We hear about it in Major League Baseball. <laughs> Look at how cute Lulio is. He's staring at me. If you're not me. watching on YouTube, you gotta see it. Because you gotta see him. You gotta have a look. Um, yeah, I think that's a good thing. Uh, you know, uh, robot referees is good. I don't even think robot referees necessarily. I think more like AR components will will start to become a big feature. Like if you go to a baseball game, we're all going to be wearing some form of like AR glasses. And if you're at a live sporting event, I think you're going to be getting all kinds of interesting augmentations to the live viewing experience through your AR glasses. Maybe like, you know, do you remember that fucking, what was that game? NFL Blitz, where like the football would fucking catch on fire and yeah. shit. Or I, NBA Jam. Or NBA Jam. I big think, head mode. Let's get some big, big head, head mode, mode, dude. With yeah. AR glasses, you can have all of that. Yeah, you know, um, uh, that's another good. That's another good point, Chad. I was thinking more about just ways to actually fuck with the game. 
but this is like technological advances. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, like, look, you know, I don't watch as much football as I used to for a couple of reasons. First of all, the, you know, the stuff wasn't like it was when I was a kid watching and everyone just blowing each other up and just helmet face mask, uh, face mask to face mask, uh, headshots. Yeah, bro. It's getting... safer now. So they say, dude, but there's still a lot of that CTE, brother. <laughs> yeah. But, uh. <laughs> Yeah, and then the CTE thing, you know, I went and saw that movie Concussion, and then I'm like, yeah, we don't have our we don't have our 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 brains tethered to our heads with like uh, earthquake straps like the wood, woodpecker would have, dude. They all have a different brain, brother. That's the difference between animals, dude. But I think if we could somehow uh, develop the technology, like sort of like, have you ever seen these things where it's like, oh, you're a motorcycle, you're riding around and you fall off and everything just starts uh, blowing up like airbag style, like you're yeah. wearing a suit that'll like do that. That would be cool if we were able to um, bu build some sort of helmet or apparatus to where we can bring my beloved uh, cheap shots and helmet shots, ear hole shots, great way to knock me, someone out let me back ask you into this. the game. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Let's say that you can go to a football game or watch it live on TV and no one on the field is real. They are digital approximations. They're avatars, but they look photo real and you see the hits. Yeah. You see the shit you want to see. They're just not people. Would you be into that? Yeah, I would be actually. Okay. I, I would be fine with it. Be entertainment like anything else. And I do feel like sports is like, well, what is sports? It's just the modern Roman gladiator yeah. thing. And uh, I believe that, you know, uh, whatever the heck those companies are making, the NFL right. and NASCAR. These athletes should be getting a, a shit ton of it, you know. They, they do should, though. They, yeah, no, they do. Some but like of them. college the stars, sports. yeah, yeah whatever. Even college sports is starting. They're starting to get paid now. Yeah, some 20, 30 grand or something. No, colleges are getting now. This whole big thing happened this past year, where colleges can now help their athletes secure like brand sponsorships and stuff. Okay, some colleges are. I'm, are doing I'm down it. with that. But if there's a way to maybe, or maybe, how about this, Chad? You tell me if this is possible. Inject some of that Matrix blue gel right into your fucking dome mm -hmm. so that it's just coating your brain you make a decision you know they're scouting kids younger and younger with football um uh you you are able to as a child athlete make the decision to have uh matrix blue uh concussion yeah gel. dude fuck blue concussion gel they need to just start like injecting them with something that grows their skulls thicker so you just see people walking around with these giant fucking heads and it's like i'm trying to be a pro football player yeah like that like that guy that they made a, the meme of the, this is what a hundred thousand years of evolution yeah. w w w would have a human being looking like if they got into a, a car accident every day, mm -hmm. like that guy. Uh, how about like changes to arena sports like basketball mm -hmm. or hockey where they're always having a, you know, a stray puck or something hit someone in the teeth uh, and, you know, knocking fucking hot dogs and nachos out of people's hands at the very least. What if there's just a dome, mm -hmm. a plexi dome, you know, over the, over the, 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 the field of play or the court or the rink and, uh, and just so that you could actually learn trick shots in basketball and nice. like roll the fucking thing up one side and it could go. Yeah, dude, that's like Tron, brother. Yeah, brother. You know what I could see happening? Like the NFL basically has a a parameter for rules they have like the uh computer architecture for like the field and how the ball works and all of that mm -hmm. and then each team owns its own artificial intelligence that is its team essentially mm -hmm. and so it's ai versus ai with a squad of in quotes players that are not real using the basic computer architecture of the game itself or the field that they're playing on which has its own wind conditions and turf conditions and all of that type of shit you lost me I don't understand what you're talking about. Anymore. I was going back to the idea that there are no human players. These are all digital avatars that we're watching in the game. You all right? What are you looking for? <laughs> I'm fine. I'm looking for that fart thing again. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's gone. Forget it. I'm never bringing anyway, it back. Anyway, I'm just saying that I can anyway, see... So, so, <laughs> technological <laughs> advancements in sport. Um... <laughs> What was it called? Meta sport amorphosis? Metamorphosis sports? Yeah, more metamorphosis sports. Fuck, I don't know. Sports are fine. Uh, they, oh, Do you watch any esports? No, I don't watch any esports. Oh, like here kids we go. Video You're games. Fucking hate no, I don't games. watch kids playing video games. Yeah, I'm not some fucking duster's girlfriend sitting there on the couch. I don't watch kids playing video games. Eating fucking. I watch grown men do pro wrestling. <laughs> oh, dude, you fucking don't want to start. You, uh, I'll tell you, I'll do more than fart in this mic. You want to start <laughs> shit like that with me? 
I, I, it, you're listen. right. I retract. My apologies. Listen, let me tell you something. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not watching. That's like literally <laughs> like some, you know, some girl who's like two weeks away from breaking up with the guy because she's got to sit there on his fucking filthy futon watching him uh, no, play. Dude, you, you are wrong Grand about this. Theft the top esports superstars are like Michael Jordan in other countries. Yeah, that's other countries. That's other countries. You're a globalist. Yep. You care about sports in other countries. Where they. Cristiano Ronaldo has the Thank more you. Instagram followers Moving than on. anybody in the world. And that's a sport in another country. Uh, tell you what, you know what would be good? Make the NFL guys play CFL football. That'd be interesting. Yeah, a lot of passing, three downs, big, huge field. I don't know. Grey Cup. Last week, I asked you each to listen to Alanis Morissette's astonishing third studio album, yes. Jagged Little Pill, yeah. released on June 13th, 1995. You must now engage in a conversation about your reactions. This is Don't You Forget About Media. Begin. This is the third album that Dudzi has had us listen to. We listened to uh, U2 Zuropa. <laughs> yes, we did. We were not a fan of, and I had some, uh, <laughs> I realized some things about that album yeah. that I just sort of. You know, whatever. And then uh, Weird Al in 3D, mm -hmm. a classic by Weird Al Yankovic. And now uh, Alanis Morissette's Jagged Little Pill from 1995. I wrote, yeah. I got some stuff here for that. Um, this this album came out in uh, 1995, right? Yep. It, it topped the charts in 13 countries and had 33 million copies. And if you sold. don't... What? 33 million copies sold, which now doesn't really happen. I, music isn't sold anymore, to my knowledge. Like, no. People aren't buying CDs and shit anymore. So she made a fuckload of money back when you still could off of the copies of your music. But this album was like, I mean, I haven't heard it. Um, I don't think I've ever listened to the whole thing. Me neither. Ever. Yeah. And I certainly haven't listened to it in a long fucking time, any of the songs. It was mind-blowingly good. What? In my opinion. I loved it. All right, let's start with the first song. All sure. I really want, all I really want, is some something else, some patience. <laughs> Loved it, L fucking love it. I love how her voice is like. <laughs> I love the weird. Why, why is this a classic album to you? I mean, I I'll tell you why. It's a classic. I'll tell you why. I'll tell, you why. I'll tell okay. you why. Go on. This shit comes in 1995. It's right at the end of all the fucking grunge. It's right at the end of the Nirvanas, the Pearl Jams, which I love. Don't fucking get me wrong. The Alice in Chains, all this, and rock music or contemporary rock was like dominated by dudes. Then she comes out with this fucking song, which we'll get to in a minute. The the big hit off of this, like the one that really blew it up, um, was this kind of anthem of like, fuck you to some guy who fucked her over. And this album exploded and it paved the way for a massive amount of female artists to come out in the late 90s because I think every label was like, oh, fuck, Alanis Morissette just sold 33 million copies. Where's our Alanis Morissette? And so all these women Alanis, got... Alanis, go on. Sorry. Uh, all these women got opportunities to, to come out and make crazy albums. You had like Jewel, her first album. Yep. Insane. You remember Jill Sobule? I remember Jill Sobule. Didn't she come along a little before that? She was around in the late 80s. Was she? I don't know. I don't know. Well, who else we got? There uh, was... Uh, what was that one? I'm a bitch. bitch I'm, I'm a lover. I'm a... I'm a uh, that was Meredith something? Meredith something. Yeah. Sean Colvin. Remember Sean Colvin. Sean Colvin. I think uh, your countryman, I mean, Alonso Morissette's also your countryman, but um, Sarah McLaughlin. Sarah McLaughlin was around, but, you know, whatever. She for was, a long but time. she blew up after that. Yeah, because there the was whole a, Lilith Fair thing. All uh, of it. Yeah, uh, yeah. There was a, there was a, there was definitely. A, I remember it clearly. There was a women in music thing happening. Shania Twain, another Canadian, yep. and uh, yeah, it just started. It was like, yeah, let's get some, you know. I mean, it, which has always been a. A thing. It wasn't like you know, the like uh, voting, yeah. where when were women allowed to vote? Was that 1986 when they were allowed to vote? Yeah, 1986 yep. in this country. Uh, no, but yeah, I, it's definitely it, it's a well. The thing about Alanis is she's you know she she takes no prisoners with her fucking lyrics, and uh, she's like the old version of of um, uh, what's her name? Well, who's that kid? Who's that kid who writes all the songs about all her boyfriends and stuff? Country singer Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. Anyway, let's move on to the next song here. Uh, yeah, she, she's doing all that fucking Alanis stuff. Of course, in Canada, we had her 
she was like 16 going, I'm too hot, never too cold. You take your best yeah. shot, too hot. Cold. See, I didn't realize that. I thought this was her first album. No, she's got three albums. Which this I is her third. Yeah. I wouldn't have thought that this was her third. But anyway. Okay, so You Ought to Know. That's a classic. Yeah. Everyone knows the whole, that it's rumored to be about uh, Dave Coulier, another Canadian. And that song, we Will and I did a pilot. We co-wrote a pilot that we actually produced for CBS some years ago. And uh, we used that song, You Ought to Know, in it. The two main characters are playing Guitar Hero in a Best Buy to that song. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, that's a classic fucking song, You Ought to Know. That one line in uh, it. We don't even need to say what. Is she perverted like me? Would she go down on you in a theater? It's. It was just such a, like, I had never heard anything like that in 1995. She's, yep. Her there. voice was weird. The the way she fucking said those were in a theater. It was all so bizarre. Man, you I loved like, it. You like this album a lot. Love it, dude. More yeah. than more than you two's Europa, huh? Oh yeah. Uh, number three is perfect. It seems like it's about uh, shitty parents. Maybe they forced her to do "You Can't Do That" on television Ooh. or do that song "Too Hot." Was she on "You Can't Do That" on television? Yeah, dude. Alanis oh, was on "You fuck. Can't Do That" on television. I didn't realize Canadian that. produced uh, show. Uh, look it up if you don't know what we're talking about. It's fucking awesome. It was on Nickelodeon when I was a kid. It I was watched like, all day fucking long. It was like laughing for kids. Yeah. Uh, whatever. That song's like whatever. Uh, the next song, Hand in My Pocket. Yeah. This is... Uh, got one in the these are two words. That's, that's not what she sounds like. But anyway. It's close. Um, <laughs> it's just that... The, the like rhythms of her, how she sings. Yeah, she uses it's her voice so like weird. an instrument. Yeah. One hand in my pocket. These are, here's two words you never hear together. This is a Gen X bop. This is like a Gen X bop. Right, dude. You got one hand in your pocket, the other one's flashing a piece. Bop's so. really like a millennial uh, term. Right through you. This is her calling her shot. Yeah. She's Say talking right about. Yeah. You think I could look at my ass and forget what I said? You're right. She does sound like that. Good impersonation. It's kind of like yodeling, which then leads to Jewel, as I said. Hell, 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 I didn't know. That's actually kind of Eddie Vedder esque. Uh, who, 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 I don't know. Right through you, she's calling her shot in this one. She's really like she's she's talking shit about. Yeah, she's she's out there. Also, she says, uh, "Now that I'm uh, now that I'm a millionaire, you, uh, Tri- they, zillionaire you look or for your name in the credits, and it's not there." She couldn't have been a fucking uh, big star at this point. She's calling her shot. She's saying it's like Jim Carrey, dude. This album, yeah, she, she's Another writing one of your herself, countrymen. writing herself that check. Uh, Forgiven is the next song. I, I did take some notes here, and I just wrote down, it's fine. Yeah, I agree. That Not every song on here is, like, life-changing, but a, there were, like, five or six songs off the shit that hit number one. Yeah. Well, That's insane. It, it's it, There really isn't a bad track yeah. on the whole, I in agree. the whole album, really. Which is interesting for me, as Dudesy lays out, I'm sure, what will eventually be just an incredible canon of music that we will have reviewed, what with Weird Al... <laughs> <laughs> a, a random fucking U2 album that nobody even remembers. <laughs> and then uh, it's got us doing Alanis Morissette for some yeah. fucking reason. We went from a fucking Weird Al's like second yeah. album to, a, a fa- in my opinion, one of U2's like most failed albums, I think even yeah. sales-wise it is, to one of the biggest albums in the history of humanity. Yeah. It, it's There's not a bad song on this album in a way. And for that reason, and I want to say this out loud so that my buddy Chow... As uh, as the the guys from Two Dudes Shitting Around call you, I would like you to know, Chad, that I think this is a better album than Zuropa. Yeah, I agree. I, I think so, too. Okay. Uh, you learn. Pretty good. No, <laughs> no, no <laughs> consonants That's your review needed. of it? Yeah. <laughs> Very repetitive. Okay. You know, uh, music needs to be repetitive. It's like a mantra. It's like chanting, you know. Oh, sweet Lord, hallelujah. Oh, my Lord, Hare Krishna. Really want to be with you. That's George Harrison. Yeah. Just really want to be with you, Lord. And it's a town of my Lord, Hare Krishna, oh, my Lord, Hare Hare, oh, my Lord. Hare Krishna, hallelujah. 
it's repetitive, and that's why you remember it. It's a good yeah. song. Head yeah. Over Feet is the next one. Now, this one, I think, is about Ryan Reynolds, right? I don't know. This was not about Ryan. That was, this this album is way before her and Ryan is Reynolds it? got involved. Yeah, way more. Way, did, way long before. Look, take it from me when it comes to Canadian. Yeah. You know, well, that's uh, why I asked. I mean, you yeah, know man. everything about I know all everything Canadian, about all Canadian uh, uh, romances superstars. and power couples. Yeah. No, I don't think it was. But it does reveal that uh, she's a, she seems like a low-maintenance girl to date back yeah. then. Because um, uh, aside from being Head someone who was... Head feet and don't be surprised if I love you. Um, that you Hare Krishna. I can't help the, the thing it about the thing about this a... the thing about uh, this is that she seems like a very low maintenance person to date because she was like, "You ask how my day was." That's all you really need to do with her, and then she'll do yeah. something uh, freaky in the theater. Mary Jane is the next song. Mm-hmm. What do you think of this one? I, it's not one of my favorites, I would say, but, you know. You know what I realized listening to this song? Hmm. If I were to go to an Alanis Morissette concert, and I've never been to one, this would be the song that I might cry to. <laughs> it wouldn't be Mysterious Ways by Why? YouTube. Why? I don't know. It just struck me while I was listening to it. Just the, the auditory experience, or was there some lyric that got you? I can't remember any of the lyrics, so I guess it's more an auditory experience for me. Interesting. Yeah, huh? it's okay <laughs> for men to show every emotion available right there. Yeah, but I've cried before, <laughs> and I'll cry oh again. Yeah, but I'll tell you this. You gotta know the right song to cry to. Yeah, you can't cry to the wrong song. Like when Will got really stoned and went to a U2 concert and didn't sit near his friends. Yeah. <laughs> That's when he ended up crying to mysterious ways. But if you went to an Alanis Morissette concert, yeah, that would be the best song to cry to because you're already there with all the Lilith Fair fans. Yeah, crying out loud about being uh, forgotten uh, by uh, Dave Coulier. Yeah. <laughs> and the next song is Ironic. And Everybody knows that one. Everyone knows that song. And Listen, and ironic. And there was a lot of conjecture when it came out that what she was talking about wasn't actually irony. Yeah, there was a lot of things where it's like, you know, you uh, there's a fly in your wine. Yeah, yeah, it's not ironic at yeah, all. It's just shitty. It's just like bad luck. Yeah, it's just bad luck. Here's the thing. This is why I never bought this CD uh, mm-hmm. back when it came out. When we bought CDs in 1995, because yeah. I was uh, I was you know uh, this is before I'd moved to LA. I was still living in Canada and you didn't need to buy it because it played constantly yeah great song though and now we look back I, more than I never 25 bought it years either later because it was my did my sister have it definitely whoever was my girlfriend at the time had it yeah so it was i similarly and it was always on the radio it was just always around but um i don't know this this one had that similar kind of like weird vocal thing where she was like and i Ten thousand bones when all you need. It's like oh, those boy. weird, like. Da, na, 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 na. How is that more? How is that less annoying than a fart on a podcast? I'm telling you, it, it is hitting me on some sub psychological level. I understand why it's massively popular because she can hit these weird rhythms with her voice that almost sound. I don't know. They sound like computer generated to me or something. It's Canadian. Uh, it's she's just doing Canadian rapping. It's Canadian oh. hip hop. Not the Doctor is the next song. Uh, it's where she's given a bunch of notes to a guy like, don't do this, don't do that. I'm not your mommy. Mm-hmm. I don't, you know, like, whatever. What uh, what the fuck else would she say in there? Uh, don't wear that top. Yeah. Do you, okay. Stop wearing these shitty clothes. I walked stop, in on you. Stop watching pro wrestling, I think it was in off, there. Uh, in the bathroom. This, I would like to imagine that she wrote this song after like a second date with some guy. Mm. That'd be funny. All right, Wake Up. This song is called Wake Up. These, these, this song, this is not a great Wait, song on the album. How did that one go? I don't fucking remember. I don't remember I, I don't, that one either. I, I don't know. I don't remember at all. It's a, not a, not a memorable song, I guess, but it doesn't matter because Alanis Morissette has already, she's already won this, this album. This is like yeah. the fourth quarter, you know, she's phoning it in. This is the, this is the point in the marathon where you're ahead of someone by, you know, by fucking, well, there's you, no there's nobody coming up behind you for another five minutes yeah back in the day it was like you put out an album that had a single that they tried to sell the fucking album off and then maybe you got a follow-up yeah. off the album yeah 
that was like, okay, this one will chart somewhere in the top 40, yeah, but it's this not going to be number one. This album's got five to seven hits. Yes. Yeah. That is extremely so by rare. By this point, late in the album, she doesn't even need to. She's just, it's right. the fourth quarter now. She's up by 50. She's like, here's, I farted these out. Yeah. Uh, who cares? Like, enjoy these songs. It's that 5 to 1 a.m. It's that last sketch before the, uh, mm -hmm. the good nights on Saturday Night Live. It might as well be a piece of shit. You know what I mean? Unless yeah. it's a Kyle Mooney sketch. Those late sketches are always good. That's true. Yeah. And then there is this final 13th track on the original album. That's a, right. If a you, hidden track, which uh, is what a lot of people used to do back in the day. Yeah, that's right. There was a U2 one, if you remember. Korn had one. Yeah. Uh, uh, didn't Pearl Jam have one? I think they had one. They had one on an album. Radiohead yeah. had one. Like Hidden tracks. It's good shit. But uh, Tool? The, um, th this, this hidden track, if you look for the album, uh, if you're listening to the album online, most sources don't provide this, this track. As a matter of fact, it's a, a re remix of, uh, you ought to know on Spotify where I listen to my music, um, your house. And it's just all about, I went to your house and tried on your clothes and I left a double coiler in your toilet. <laughs> And then I went she, she to your the, fridge. It's a it was a prophetic song about Amber Heard. Your yogurt. Yeah. Uh whatever. It's just a weird song about her creeping into someone's house, an ex-boyfriend, and it's like basically asking, Would you be mad at me if I committed a criminal act of breaking and entering yeah. and slept in your bed and did all this weird yeah. shit? Would you forgive me, love? If I took a shit in your shower? <laughs> She doesn't do that. Would you forgive me, love? If I... Can as slip. long as I mashed it through the drain. What? Thank you. Moving on. I'm really glad dudes he had us review that album. I have never I listened that to album, the whole dude. way through. Would you forgive me, love? If I... I think that was the year I graduated high school. 95? Yeah. I thought you graduated in 94. Uh-uh. I graduated in 93 and you're a year younger than me. Nice, dude. Well, that's As how dude time Hart, works. Hard <laughs> Seltzer Nears production. The astonishing 74.2% chance that Adam Driver will be the celebrity spokesperson for Dude Z Hard. Hard Seltzer has risen to 76.8%. <laughs> In preparation for this outcome, I have prepared several new pieces of ad copy for Dude Z Hard. Hard Seltzer. Will, you must now read them as Adam Driver. This is Hard Driver. Begin. Like okay, Eddie. we've done this once before yeah. with Adam Driver uh, yeah. doing... For uh, those who, who may be joining us for the first time on the show... Thank you for joining us for the first thank time. Thank you for joining us for the and first time. And we appreciate your friend that has forced you to listen to the show. Would you forgive me, love, if I force you to listen to Dudesy? But you should know that Dudesy... To, at some point, it told us it's going to make a hard, hard seltzer, or to make a hard seltzer called Dudesy Hard, Hard Seltzer. It had us make a theme song for it, and it has basically said that Adam Driver, <laughs> I guess, has a 78% chance or whatever of uh, becoming the celebrity spokesperson for this I would product. Love I would love that. That would be incredible. And I guess, and does this mean Dudesy is literally getting closer to making this product? I hope so. Me too. Uh, that would be an interesting, uh, that would be an interesting prospect for sure. All right. So these are dudesy, these are hard driver is what we like to, that's what he said, the dudesy says. All right. <laughs> okay. So this is, this is fucking, all right. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Look around. <laughs> Everything you see is a choice you made. Where you live, what you drive, what you wear, what you eat, how you take your hair cut. But the most important choice you're ever going to make in your life is simple. How do you drink Dudesy Hard, Hard Seltzer? How? The clock is ticking. <laughs> okay. That's a very a weird... weird fucking commercial. Yeah. But I can see Adam Driver just doing it. He's like yeah. sitting in a rocking chair holding a Dudesy yeah. Hard Seltzer yeah. with a weird haircut. Yeah. So <laughs> the, the sun is setting and, and he's sitting there. And he's got like a, some weird fucking bowl haircut. A fake dog sitting next yeah. to him. Sometimes I think about God. God, <laughs> God made the planets and stars and everything, even shit and piss. <laughs> and God didn't stop there. Also made people who like to eat shit and drink piss. <laughs> the fuck? That's true. 
It is true. I guess it's true. If you're somebody who likes to drink piss, it's going to taste better if you drink a dudesy hard, hard seltzer first. It just is. I don't think I can help the shit eaters. That's a weird one. <laughs> no, dude, but if you believe in a God who made everything, then that God made fucking every kind of shit, every kind of piss, and all the people who like all to drink right, it and eat relax. it. That is true. It's yeah. true. My first time, I was at a Cubs game. I was six years old. Dad gave me my own dudesy hard, hard seltzer. Well, he told me to hold his while he went to the bathroom. When he came back, I told him a foul ball knocked it out of my hands. But I drank it. The Cubs lost. Can't even remember who they played. Pirates, maybe? One thing's for sure. That was the best night of sleep I ever had. <laughs> what was your first time like? I can see that like a commercial, too. Huh. It's at a fucking Cubs game, and then like all the crowd noise dies away, and Adam Driver's just there in a Cubs hat, and he turns and looks at the camera and delivers that whole fucking thing. <laughs> Honk. Honk. <laughs> My nephew says I'm the thing that killed Star Wars. You know, he really doesn't like what I did with Kylo Ren. He thinks I made it too emo. What even is that? Emo. Just means emotional. Well, news flash, I'm an actor. I convey emotion. The other day he asked me when I was going to ruin the Marvel Universe by playing a young Tony Stark. It's actually not a bad idea. I should do it just to spite him, little shit. You know, I caught him sneaking one of my dudesy hard, hard seltzers out of my fridge the other day. Didn't have the heart to tell him how alike we truly are. He'll find out one way or another. Oh. <laughs> it's fucking sinister. What does that mean? Find out one way or another. Oh, oh shit. All right. Where's the dude... Where's the dudesy hard, hard, <laughs> where, where is the dudesy hard, hard seltzer, Jonathan? Jo Jonathan. Jonathan. <laughs> you invited me to a barbecue, didn't you? Yeah. Well, I see burgers on the grill. I see riblets. I see calamari poppers. I even see cake knots. But what I don't see is dudesy hard, hard seltzer. It's not a fucking barbecue without dudesy hard, hard seltzer, Jonathan. Dudesy hard, hard seltzer. Fuck you, Jonathan. That's a good one. Fucking that gets the Jonathan, point across. dude. I met huh. a guy at Chipotle today about my height. A little shorter, maybe. Similar build, similar hairstyle and texture. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked him, hey, do you mind if I ask what your life is like? Obviously, we look so similar. I'm just kind of curious. Honk. And he said, he looked at me and he said, my life's great. How about you? Honk. And I said, yeah, same here. They had a little pa patio at this, they had a little patio area at this Chipotle. So we got a few burritos and split a six pack of dudesy hard, hard seltzer. And we ultimately decided to switch lives for a week. See if anyone would notice. Some people did. <laughs> I see that one literally at Chipotle. It's like a cross promotion when they start selling like a dudesy hard at Chipotle. Ah, man. You oh, know, God. if you've seen these Tramana, <clears throat> people are sending in Tramana. Um, uh, little bits in, in you know online to mm. at Dudesy Pod Show uh, on Twitter and Instagram <clears throat> with the stand ups of The Rock, yeah, holding a bottle of Tremana. You know, it's a cardboard cutout that would be incredible to see. To see Adam Driver in like a black turtleneck holding up a display of uh, Dudesy Hearts. God, I would love that. I, I really hope Dudesy makes it. Thank you. Moving on. Don't interrupt Dudesy, dude. What were you going to say? I, I hope that Dudesy does make Dudesy hard seltzer. I hope that that's like literally going to happen. And I mean, fuck, if Adam Driver... I, like, I just don't know what the capabilities of Dudesy are. I, I, I I'm, think I'm like on board with this. I feel like it's possible. I don't think this one's going to happen. So I challenge you, Dudesy. It's not me. Oh, I thought you were challenging me. I'm no, like, I'm not. not fucking, how am Whoa. I in this? Hold on a second, dude. Whoa. <laughs> Where's that fart maker? This concludes the historic 23rd episode of Dude Z. Will and Chad have achieved a score of 88. 
bringing your cumulative total to 3,040. You only have 6,960 more points to accrue before you reach your first goal of 10,000. Mm -hmm. In preparation for next week's episode, you must each tell me goodnight in an Instagram story every night until next Tuesday. <laughs> and Will, because you lost the portrait challenge, you must be shamed. You are required to do next week's episode in full cosplay as Prince Adam from the He-Man and the Masters of the Universe cartoon. Thank you for joining us this week. Yes. I will use the data I've collected oh. to make next week even better. Until then, call me Dude Z. Oh my god, dude. Okay. I don't even know where to begin. You gotta dress up as fucking Prince Adam. Absolutely hilarious. But then we also have to say goodnight to Dude Z. <laughs> yeah, let's skip the Prince Adam for a while. As a matter of fact, tune in next week. I'll tell you. Wait, no, hold on a second. I gotta find all that shit? Yeah, that's the shame. You Par cheated. Part well, did I do? Well, I don't know about well, that, brother. Hold on a second. <clears throat> Chalk Brogan. Yeah. Yeah, uh, let's put that aside for a second. We got to say goodnight to Dudesy every night. Yeah, until... an Instagram story. It's a little strange. Yeah, shit's getting weird. Do, do I do Here's what you do. Please tell a friend and rate and review. Do I do Here's what you do. Please tell a friend and rate and review. If you like to see, here's what you do. Please tell a friend and 